Where is the best place to invest in property or real estate for you? Spoiler alert, I'm not going to be naming towns or cities. Hi, I'm Andy from Monopoly.com and on this channel I share the lessons I've learned as a property investor and landlord and also interview other investors so we can learn from their advice too. So if you're new here, consider subscribing for more videos like this. Now people typically ask the question, where is the best place to invest in real estate or property? Because they want to find out which areas are producing the best yield and capital growth. That's fine, but the answers or locations that they receive may not suit them for a number of reasons. The world is a big place and there isn't one particular location that's good for everyone. Also, an investment property for me may not be a good one for you and vice versa. Return on investment is based on how much capital you have tied up in the property and the yields are based on the rental income and the purchase price. Let's say we both view the same two properties at separate times. Property one may be a better investment for you because you're a better negotiator than me. I might be looking to pay 100,000 for it and you might get the price down to 85,000, which will affect the yield dramatically. That makes it a good investment for you, but not necessarily for me. Now I might see an opportunity with property number two that you don't see. I then buy it and add value, whether that's an extension, a change of the layout, or even a change of use through planning permission and I end up receiving a bigger return on investment and a higher yield, despite your bargain on the purchase of property number one. You see where I'm going with this? There are good investments everywhere, but they'll take time to find and there'll be some legwork required. So in order to find the best area for yourself, there are just two things, there are just two things that you need to consider. First off is location. The first thing you should do is think of location in terms of comfort. If you're looking to buy your first investment, you might want to buy near your home. So you've got the comfort of knowing that you can get there quickly and easily if there's a problem, whilst you find your feet and learn the ropes as a property investor and landlord. Because I used to move around with my work a lot, I bought my first investment near family who had settled in an area, knowing that it'll be fairly easy for them to visit the property and help out if there was ever a problem. So once I decided on the city, the estate agents then told me which areas I should look at. If I knew then what I know now, I'd have also contacted some letting agents to get their opinion as well. But thankfully, it all worked out fine. Location can also be determined by how hands-off you want to be as an investor. If you're happy to take an armchair investment approach, then the location won't be so much of a concern for you. But you will still need to consider the next thing, which is how much time you have in order to visit the area and confirm your research and carry out property viewings. So the second thing you should consider is time. It's important that you have knowledge of the area that you're considering investing in and you're going to need time to do this. You can start your research online and make a few phone calls, but I'd recommend visiting the area before you make a purchase. If you don't have a lot of time to travel long distances, then again, I'd recommend investing near home or a town or city near your home, say within a 30 to 60 minute drive, because again, it will be easier and quicker for you to do your viewings and confirm your research. You could also consider the town or city where you grew up or a place where you've lived in the past because you'll already have some knowledge of the area and you may have family or friends there that can help out similar to the position that I was in. And hey, when you start shopping for a property, you may also be introduced to opportunities in the area through people you know. As I've said before, don't spend too much time chasing the best deal because there'll always be better deals out there and people that have more success than you. But that will likely be because they have more experience of being a landlord and an investor. It won't just be down to the location. Location and time are the two factors that will determine which areas are going to be best for you to invest in real estate or property. Don't get hung up on the best location in your country, especially when you're starting out. Look for a good location that will work and fit with you and then look for a good property. It's like anything, you've got to be good at something before you can be great or the best at it. So what areas are you looking to invest in? Comment below and I'll join the discussion. This week's question comes from Bob. And he says, I've watched quite a few of your videos over the past few days and enjoyed all of them. Oh, thanks for the comment, Bob. I really appreciate that feedback. You mentioned in one of them that you rent your properties furnished. 
Why do you feel that is better? With the recent tax changes, removing the wear and tear element, will you change your tactics? Thanks, Bob. I let those properties furnish because it was what the market demanded at the time for the type of properties I bought. So when I bought them, I knew that I would need to let them furnish. Now I was happy with that. I knew how much the cost would be. I knew what the rental income would be and it worked out well. Yes, the removal of the wear and tear allowance is gonna change things. Unfortunately, we can't do anything about that. But from April 2017, any furniture that you need to purchase for your rental property can be deducted against your income on your tax return. And actually, it's a fairer system because you're only deducting what you've actually spent. I would actually like to let my next property unfurnished, so we'll see what happens. Thanks for your question, Bob. And if you have a question you'd like answered, you can do so by leaving a comment down below or contacting me on my social media networks or via my blog at monopoly.com forward slash ask. Oh, one more thing before I go. Last summer in my Brexit video, I said this. We have already seen some growth for this year between the months of January and May. And by the end of the year, I'd expect to see an average growth of around 4% for the year 2016. I'll make a note in my diary to check this early in the new year. Now we all know that statistics can be tweaked or twisted depending on the view that you look at them from, but the media have been reporting this. Telegraph reports a rise of 4.5%, UK House Price Index 7.2%, Nationwide 4.5%, and the Office of National Statistics, which released their data on the 14th of February, shows an average UK dwellings increase by 7.2%. So the UK property market actually rose more than 4% on average for the year 2016. Just saying. And I'll link to all those sites in the description. Please like and share this video if you found it useful and definitely subscribe if it's your first time visiting the channel so you won't miss any of my future videos which will all be geared towards helping you start or improve your property business. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. hoping that I've connected it properly so that it's picking up the mic. I think it is because I clicked it in quite hard.